Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. Right now we have Colin O'Dell. He's going to be giving an introduction to the lead common mark package. Please make sure you visit joined in after the talk and leave Colin some feedback. All right. Thanks, Joe. Today we're going to talk about the PHP League's common mark library. But first, a brief introduction of myself. So again, my name is Colin O'Dell, and I'm the lead web developer at Unleash Technologies. We're a web and hosting firm based out of Columbia, Maryland. I've been a PHP developer for about 14 years now, although I've also done a good bit with JavaScript, C Sharp, and Java as well. I'm the author of the League Common Mark project, which I'll be sharing today, as well as the League's HTML to Markdown converter and the PHP 7 migration guide ebook. You can find me on Twitter at Colin O'Dell or my website, colinodell.com. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Markdown parser. The League Common Mark Library is a well written, super configurable Markdown parser for PHP based on the Common Mark spec. At its core, it takes Markdown in and spits HTML out. Now, I've mentioned the word Markdown, I'm sorry, I've mentioned the word Common Mark a few times, but what is Common Mark? Common Mark is a strongly well-defined, highly compatible specification of Markdown. It's written by people from GitHub, Stack Overflow, Reddit, and others. Now we're all familiar with the usual Markdown syntax, but this specification dictates exactly how compliant parsers should handle Markdown input. The spec includes things like strict rules about precedence, parsing order, and handling edge cases. And for each of these rules, there's very specific definitions. So things like white space are defined in detail. Punctuation is defined. So not only what is punctuation, but what code points in Unicode are punctuation. How does punctuation affect the parsing of certain types of elements? The spec also contains 613 different examples of sample markdown input and HTML output. And by providing these examples, that allows parsers like mine to be able to ensure that they are indeed compliant by running them through with functional tests. So that all sounds pretty cool, right? But why do we need a spec? Do we really need one? Isn't Markdown pretty simple? Well, let's take a look at an example. Here we've got a straightforward example of emphasizing text. So we have some text, we put an asterisk on either side, and then a Markdown parser will render it like so. You'll see we've got a paragraph tag, emphasis, and then inside is our string, I love Markdown. That's pretty straightforward. But what happens if we add a couple more asterisks to our string? How should a parser handle something like this? Well, there's this really cool website called Babel Mark 2, and you can go there and type in any Markdown string you want, click a submit button, and then it automatically runs it through 27 of the most popular Markdown parsers. And what's really cool is you get to see how they parse certain things differently. In this case, if we were to run this string through it, you'd find that about 15% render it like so. So they consider the entire string to be emphasized, but then there's also this nested inner emphasis. Now this is probably what you and I would expect to happen if you had a string like this. But again, only 15% of parsers actually handle it this way. Some parsers will handle it like this. Instead of emphasizing the whole string, you'll see that there's two separate sets of emphasized text. So the I will be emphasized and the markdown will be emphasized. And again, this is about 30% of parsers do it this way. But what's even stranger is that a whopping 33% handle it like this. What they do is they look for an asterisk to the left of a word, an asterisk to the right, and consider that entire bit to be the emphasized text. And you can see it leaves behind a couple asterisks and doesn't really do quite what you'd expect. Now, if you're keeping score at home, you may notice that the percentages on the right side don't add up to 100%. And that's because there are actually three different ways that other parsers handle this, which are even weirder. So the common mark standard is really designed to eliminate this ambiguity so that your markdown is always handled in a logical and predictable fashion. And that's why we've decided to adopt this specification for our Markdown library. So our primary goal was to make a Markdown parser that not only supported the full common mark standard, but that it was also really easy to implement. If you want to add this to your own PHP project, 
all you have to do is run a composer require, so pull on the package, and then it's two lines of PHP code, one to instantiate the converter, and a second one to convert that markdown into HTML. And if you're using any number of popular CMSs or frameworks, there are community-built integrations that will allow you to instantly drop this into your own project. Now, not only is this project, uh, this library, really easy to implement, it also caters to advanced users by being really easy to customize. So advanced users who need more power, control, flexibility, or even custom syntax can easily add that into the parser. Let's take a look at an example. So here's an example of standard markdown, which you may be familiar with. We have a URL that we want to link to, and we're using the standard auto-linking syntax. So we've got a URL in the middle, on the left is a less than sign, on the right is a greater than sign, and virtually every markdown parser out there will convert it into an A tag. The A tag will have an href and a text label of that URL. Now let me show you how our engine does this behind the scenes, how it converts it from the markdown to the HTML. First, we start off with just the standard markdown input. We take this and we run it through a bunch of subparsers. And those subparsers are looking for things like link tags and bold tags and lists. And the parsers take that and convert it into an abstract syntax tree, also known as an AST. The AST is basically a tree structure of PHP objects, which um, each object represents a certain type of element. So for easier uh, visualization here, I'm showing what that might look like if those PHP objects were represented as XML. So we have a document, inside the document is a paragraph, inside the paragraph is a link with a destination, and then inside that link we have some text. So once we've got this final AST, we can then move on to the next step, which is passing it through to the renderers, which convert the AST into the final HTML. Now what's really cool is that the lead comma mark library allows you to hook into any of these three steps, so you can easily add your own custom parser processor or renderer. Now let's go back to our autolink example here. Um, what if we wanted to add similar autolinking functionality, but for Twitter handles? So for example, say we take a Twitter handle and we enclose it with the same less than and greater than sign, and we want this to automatically be converted into a link to that user's profile page. Let me show you how to do this. I'm going to show you an actual code example. It's actually pretty straightforward. All you have to do is create one class, simply create a subparser. And that subparser takes in two methods. The first method you have to define basically tells the main parsing engine what characters you're interested in. In this case, we're interested in telling the engine, hey, whenever you see a less than sign, we want you to stop and immediately call our parse method. So we can try and parse this syntax ourselves. So in the parse method, what do we need to do to implement this parsing functionality? The first thing we do is to grab a handle on the cursor. The cursor is just a simple yet powerful wrapper around the current line of markdown being parsed. The, the cursor contains information like um, whether the line is indented, what, is the con what are the contents of that line, what position are, is the parser currently at, is it at the 32nd character or the 56th character, it also has a lot of really nice utility methods to help parse through that string, look through it, try and match regular expressions, and so on. So we want to take the current line, and we want to try and match a regular expression. Our regular expression is simply looking for a less than sign, an at symbol, some letters, numbers, and underscores, and then the closing greater than sign. And if we're able to match it, let's take that full match text, strip out the stuff on the left and the right that we don't care about, and we're left with just the username. We can then take that username, append it to this URL here, and then we have a URL to their profile page. From here, we can create the new link element for our AST. So we're creating a new link that takes in the profile URL, and then the label is just the at sign and our username. And then we can pop that on to the current container. The current container just means whatever element we're currently inside of. So if we're currently parsing a paragraph, we want to add this link to that paragraph. If we're parsing a list, add the link to the list, and so on. And lastly, we just return true to let the engine know that we were able to parse it. And if we couldn't, we just return false, and the engine will figure out a different way to parse it. 
Maybe it'll try parsing it as a normal autolink or just as plain text. It'll figure all of that out for you. So that's it. That's all you need in order to add your own custom syntax to this parser. Now the APIs and methods might seem a little unfamiliar, but hopefully you can see how easy it is to add features seamlessly with only a few lines of code. So again, it's really easy to customize this project to fit your needs with classes and extension points that are specifically designed with customization in mind. Now the parser also supports full UTF-8 compatibility. Things like the cursor that I shared with you earlier, that is fully UTF-8 aware. So as you're parsing through the string, if you tell it to get the next character, it'll be able to determine if that's a Unicode character and handle that accordingly. So the parser supports Chinese characters, it supports emoji, any kind of UTF-8 strings you have, you can throw at it and it'll handle it just fine, whether you're doing simple parsing or more advanced customizations. And lastly, the common mark library is extremely well tested. I believe we currently have 94% code coverage, including unit and functional tests. And that does include all 613 tests from the official common mark spec test suite. And this guarantees that our parser is fully compatible with other common mark parsers in other languages like Java, JavaScript, C sharp. So if you're dealing with a complex project that has different components in different languages, you'll know that your common mark markdown will be handled the same way across the different languages. So that's it. Hopefully you think this is a really cool project and you want to check it out. If so, you can find the library on Packagist. The name of the package is league slash common mark. If you'd like to get installation instructions or read more documentation on how you can customize it, just go to github.com slash the PHP league slash common mark. And if you'd like to learn more about the Common Mark standard and the Common Mark spec, you can visit commonmark.org. And I'd also invite you to go check out join.in slash 16748. That's the web page for this lightning talk. Um, you can check out the slides afterwards. You can leave feedback. I'd love to hear what you think about this project and hopefully you find it useful and want to try it out in your next project. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP lightning talk. If, you would, if you'd like to give a lightning talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit joined in and leave Collins some feedback. <laughs>